Over time, a lot of people have asked me down in the comments about how they can attach things to metal. I actually did a video on using special adhesives to adhere wood to metal, but I figured it's time to finally discuss a fastener solution as well. There's a certain type of screw on the market that actually makes attaching the metal very easy, almost as easy as fastening the wood. That screw and its applications are what I'm talking about today on The Honest Carpenter Show. For a long time, if you wanted to attach metal objects together or other objects to metal, you had to bore a hole in both materials and connect them with a nut and bolt, a laborious multi-step process. Or for thinner gauge metals, you could also use something like a sheet metal screw, which pierces thin metal walls with a sharp point and otherwise fastens like a typical screw. You see them a lot on gutter downspouts, but they don't really work for any metal thicker than a 16th of an inch. There really wasn't a way to quickly connect thicker gauges of metal until these came along self-drilling screws. A company called Tex first popularized these screws in the late 60s, but now every major fastener company seems to make them. What's amazing about self-drilling screws is that they cut out the whole boring process, something you would normally have to do with the drill and a high-tempered drill bit. Instead, these screws bore their own hole into metal. You can identify self-drilling screws by this chunky shovel-shaped head. They all have it, and if you look closely, you'll see that the head also has beveled gullets on both faces. When rotating, these gullets create a pairing effect, very gradually slicing away at layers of metal as they bore their way into a surface. It's sort of like what an electric planer does to wood, except that these screws do it from a plunging vertical position. Keep in mind, these screws aren't meant to be confused with self-tapping screws. There's a lot of confusion on this topic, and even I was confused about it for a long time. These days, a lot of people call these notched screws self-tapping, but technically almost any screw with a point is self-tapping, because it taps its own thread channels as it drives. These notched ones just do it more effectively by gouging and clearing some waste material as they tap. But in some circumstances, you still have to drill your own pilot hole for these self-tapping screws, especially in metal, which is too hard for this screw type to cut through. But self-driving screws solve this multi-step problem. They drill their own hole, then also tap their own thread channels to create fastening power. It's an incredibly effective process, and it's made a bunch of applications much easier and faster than they used to be, especially things like attaching metal shed roofing or producing various stamped metal parts. But homeowners and DIYers will also find themselves in need of these screws as they attempt to hang or fasten various things around a house or a building. So here's a quick primer on how to use them. Driving a self-drilling screw is a lot like driving other screws. It's just slower in the beginning. They tend to come in Phillips and hex head. I really prefer hex head because you can use nut driving bits with them, which are very stable. Just load the fastener head into your driver bit. Then put the point of your screw in the place where you want to make your attachment and bear down with a decent amount of force. I'll often brace the back of the drill or driver with my free hand to create pressure. Pull the trigger and let the bit spin up. Very quickly, the head of the screw will begin notching a pinpoint in the metal. If it doesn't, you can use something like a metal punch or even just a sharp nail to create a set point, but I often find this isn't necessary. Also, drilling metal is more about pressure than speed. You don't need to spin extremely fast, just somewhere in your mid-range, but you do want to maintain constant pressure throughout the start. This helps the screw head begin to cut. As seconds go by, you'll begin to see the head kicking out metal shavings and forming a conical depression. It's paring out the walls of the cut little by little. Really, you just have to keep going like this until you begin to hear the drill whining at a higher pitch. It's encountering less resistance now as the head bores fully through. When the hole is complete, the fastener sinks to the threads. Now, driving at the same pace will cause the threads to bite and cut. The head may also need to bore through a second surface below, but when the threads are set in that material, the components will draw together. Only drive until you're tight and then stop. Don't overdrive self-drilling screws because the pressure can snap off the heads. Once your components are tight, you're done with your connection. Keep in mind that you'll need a fastener long enough to pierce both components you're attaching with multiple threads embedded in both sides. The threads are where fastening power comes from. Also, the thickness of the metal you're trying to bore determines the gauge of fastener that you want to use. Thicker metal requires a self-drilling screw with a larger head. For instance, a Tex number no. 5 screw can bore through half-inch steel, which is basically structural steel. That's a lot of boring power. Tex and other companies publish fastening schedules online that you can use to determine which type of products you'll need for your application. I'll link some below. But that's how you use self-drilling screws. I generally always keep several links on hand because you never know when you'll need them. 
I'll link a variety of them in the description, as well as some bits and drivers that I think will be helpful. Feel free to shop those links if you need anything. As always, thanks for watching. Be sure to check back soon for more videos coming up, and please consider subscribing and hitting that bell button to turn on notifications. I'm Ethan James with The Honest Carpenter. I'll see you next time.